one of the worst things a person can ever do in their lives is to believe that the elements of any happening, any future event, if they pinpoint those elements, if they're wrong about the slightest thing, it will fight your faith in a large degree once that time comes. However, if you're familiar with all the elements, revelation will come throughout the happening. Never be afraid of being right smack dab in the middle of these times. Don't be afraid of that. Because those who are afraid, they were taught to be afraid of this time. They really were. Those who don't want to be in a certain place at a specific time, they're taught to be afraid. Because I don't listen or have not heard the rhetoric. Um, well, I've heard the rhetoric, but I don't, I'm not looking to solve the Bible, right? I want to get to know the Lord by his word. So I'm, I'm not one of those who wants to really give a conclusion to anything. And because of that, uh, and because I do have experience in chaos, specifically chaos, there's no fear concerning the end times. Is there trepidation or, or, or a moment of pause? Of course there is, because you don't know what it entails. Thus, you trust the word of God. And one of his greatest words is, he's the one doing it. So if your father is doing all this, right, in, in right now and in the future settings, if he's doing it all, why would you be afraid? Why would you be afraid that you have a good father, right, doing these things? I do suggest this. If anybody is afraid of the future events that will roll out and they're frightened of being harmed or anything else, don't put yourself in a position where you would not be in good standing with Christ, right? Don't put yourself in a position where you're fighting with him, with the word. Don't put yourself in that position. If, if, if I had a good father and I knew that to fall out of graces with him, my life would be in danger. Well, then guess what? I'm not going to fall out of graces with him. But then that, that's one part of it. But let I tell you what, when you follow the Lord, because he is the Lord, when you follow him because of the cross, which is to say, when you follow him because he gave his life first for you, when you realize that love, you don't care if you're harmed or not in the future. I tell you right now that love itself, you're receiving that love, your understanding of the cross is directly proportional to the fear you have of the end days. When you understand the cross, when you understand that the Lord gave us life just for you and for your brother to your left and your right up and down, when you understand that, you have an instant desire to want to do something for the Lord. You don't care what you go through. See, when love is strong enough, you don't care what you go through so long as you convey that love. You don't care what comes your way so long as you convey that love. Because a father gave it all for us. I'm going to give my all for him. See, there's nobody in the world that will accept me like Christ and my father did. No one. No one. I know this. That story is already written. I do more than receive it. I know it. I just know that I know. And because of that, my pursuit or my following of Christ is not for reward. It's because it's an acknowledgement that he loved me first. And I understand that love. There is no greater love than that. There's no comparable love than that. There's no fear in me going in the end days because I'm ready to give it all up right now. And I've been tested by that. Every time a situation comes, I'm telling you right now that there, I don't care what comes. My respect for what the Lord did for me, my accepting of his love, just knowing the story of the cross is enough to fuel me for the rest of my days. I don't follow the Lord because of promises, because of what I may receive either. If he, didn't, if he didn't give me anything else in my life, he's given it all already. It's well enough for me. See, so there's no fear in that. Fear can operate in a determined vessel that has received the love of Christ. Understanding that love of the cross, really accepting his story. Knowing that, well, things will be a bit different, a lot different. I, I use a phrase. I, I started to say, I said something in 2010 
and people were shocked at first, but I think they're understanding now. I said, I told everybody, I do not have to make it into the kingdom of God. If he said, don't come in to the gates, but he allowed me to stay there, it would, it would, it would be a gift for an eternity to know that my labors here were not in vain. To know I did something that the Lord accepted and to see people go into the kingdom. Because when you love what the Lord did, something happens. Anybody know what that is? Anybody? When you know what the Lord did and you accept the cross, not only do you receive his love upon your own life, but you begin to see his love upon other folks' lives too. The same love you received of the Lord yourself, you see it on your brother's and your sister's life. Then you begin to look at them and see how precious they are. You see how precious they are to the Lord. Not only did he die for me, but he died for you too. That makes you just as precious. Hmm? And so your pursuit of following Christ out of honor, out of accepting of his love, that same pursuit, that, that same energy behind your pursuit of Christ is conveyed by way of love to your fellow man. And you'll find yourself laboring. You'll understand what it is to owe a debt of love. A debt of love is always paid, but no one ever complains about it. Oh, and there can never be enough. That's one debt that can never be repaid, and nobody minds paying it. Because when you understand that, your life changes. By the way, that's one thing Satan never wants you to understand. He wants you to run away. He wants you to operate in confusion. If anybody is frightened of the end times, I'm telling you again, your father is the one doing it. You have a good father who gave his only begotten son that you may be redeemed. So you could be cleaned up. The same father who gave his only begotten son, Christ Jesus, who put Jesus in charge over our lives. He is the one that determines when things happen and to what intensity. Don't ever be afraid of what your father is doing to deliver you. See, to you, he's delivering you. Now, if the picture this, if the Lord delivers, if you were to go into a forest, right? Picture yourself as a rabbit. All right, you're the rabbit in the forest, but you're trapped. The hunter or, or your owner is coming. He's also a hunter. So he walks into the forest. You're the rabbit, right? There are other rabbits out there, and this guy happens to like rabbits. He's looking just for you. He's coming, and he's going to look for you. But on his way there, he spots some lions. They're gone. He shoots them. They're dead. You hear the gunshots. You might be frightened of the gunshots because you never heard gunshots before. He's still walking. He's coming closer to you. He sees wolves. They're about to come and get you, but he shoots them. They never make it. Psh, more noise. You see carnage all around you. You're about to have a heart attack. You're still trapped, and you're seeing this carnage. You're in a high state of fear. The guy coming with the gun shooting all the predators... That's your owner. That's your, the one who takes care of you, who reared you from a little tiny little rabbit. And then you ran out in the forest and trapped yourself. He's still coming. He's going to get rid of every single predator and everything that ever thought it might have wanted to taste you. But he's not coming to kill you. He's causing havoc and destruction to the entire animal kingdom in the forest and to the forest itself. But he's coming to free you. He's not coming for you, but you hear the noise of him coming. You hear the commotion of his arrival. You hear the screams and the howls of everything that fell that was in opposition to him and you. He's coming to get you, not to use weapons against you, but to free you. But everything that's not you, it will be destroyed. You have nothing to fear. See, the rabbit hears the commotion. He can smell the scent. It must be terrible when you don't understand what's happening. 
You're just like that rabbit. In the end days, you're caught in a forest, in a trap. But the Lord is coming. He's not coming to kill you. He's coming to free you. And everything around you that ever thought it wanted to destroy you will be destroyed. You may hear the commotion. You may smell the smells. You may hear the cries. But that's for all those that are not like you. He's coming to free you. And I'll tell you something. Because I know, the, all of us know, he sent his only begotten son to die at that cross. He wasn't playing then. He won't be playing now. And Jesus will not return as the lamb. But king. It's a different story that people are about to observe. And they've had a lifetime to consider it. So have we. So don't have fear. Because all the noise and commotion, the earth cracking, the storms increasing, every, all this stuff, that's your father coming to deliver you. See, that's why the Bible's description of birth pains is so incredible to me, not because, it's, not because it says birth pains, but there's a commotion before every single deliverance. Hmm? Both at birth and in this case, to get you out of the trap for an eternity. Don't fear that. All right? So as we go through the book of Daniel, don't fear the elements in the book of Daniel. Understand what your father is doing. Understand why he's doing it. Understand the components. You never have to come to a conclusion. You do know he's coming to get you out of all this commotion because he will lay down. He'll destroy all iniquity with the brightness of his coming, the enemy and everybody else. He's not coming to destroy you, but to deliver you. To the earth, to those in the earth who love their doings in the earth, to them is going to be a terrible day. A terrible day. But to the righteous, though they may hear, that's why the Lord said, All ye meek of the earth, who have wrought his judgment in the earth, hide yourselves in me. That's what he said. You will hear, they will hear that commotion. It's not coming against them. No, those are the footsteps of the creator of this world. He's coming with an eviction notice, with a bunch of notices, and everything will be fulfilled. So never fear the end times. They were never against you. Satan has just lied. And he speaks through a lot of people, and he tries to make you associate your life's happenings with future events. Don't do that. He wants you to associate the pain you felt growing up, the discomfort you felt growing up with discomfort that has not happened yet. I'm telling you now, it's not going to be that way. You cannot listen to Satan, who can only use your past to determine your future. That's all he does. That's all an accuser can ever do. They can use everything of your past in an attempt to make you see a future the way they want you to. Don't fall for that. The future belongs to Christ Jesus and his beloved. Hmm? The Father will return, and he will not play games in doing so. Man has had his moment. Satan has had his moment. The fulfillment of the moment of Satan is coming is called the system of the beast. It's called the Antichrist, whatever you want to call it. And even it is important. Don't fear that system either. Don't fear it. How many of you love Christ Jesus? I'm going to show you one more thing before we begin to read. How many of you love Christ Jesus for real? You know he's real. Now just think on that. You know he's real. No one had to teach you that he was real. It does not mean you followed him all your life either. It means you dodged him. You always knew he was real. In your time of sin, what did you do? You dodged him. When somebody came with a Bible, you ran the other direction. Why? Because you knew he was real. See, for someone who thinks Jesus is not real, they'll never run from the Bible. They'll never run. You ran from it because you knew he was real. And that is to say, 
there's something upon you. You know what the Bible says about that? The Bible says that Jesus was quoted in saying, All who have come to me, the Father hath given me. And I will in no wise cast out at the last day. That means it's impossible for you to believe that way. Unless God has given you to Christ, which he did. If, if, you, if God did not give you to Christ, you would have never run from the Bible. You would abuse the Bible, use it, laugh at it, joke with it, and do everything else. You may have sinned in the world, but you can only go so far with the little jokes about the Bible. You can only go so far, and you always believed in Christ. That's why you dodged him. See, you didn't have it like everybody else. The folks in the world, if they're truly of the world, they can have the Bible open in one hand, right? Have no fear in their hearts and commit heinous sins in the other hand at the exact same time. You can do that. What did you go and do? Some of you, you tucked your Bible away like it had eyeballs. Like you didn't want your Bible to see your sin. You know you did it. You have to believe to do that. Nobody's going to take a Bible, cover it up with something like it has eyeballs. I can, can see what you're doing in, in order to satisfy your conscience at the moment. But believers do quirky things like that. Why? Because they truly believe. If you did not believe, it would just be another book. But it's not just another book. Even in your days of sin, do you see that? Even in your days of sin, you were a believer. Do you see that? You were not always obedient. See, the Bible says we were once children of wrath. The Bible says we were once dead, but we were still the promised ones. Do you see it now? Hmm? Those are traits of a true believer. You cannot believe in Christ that way. Lest the Father has given you to his Son. And if the Father gave you to his Son, you will not be lost. I'm telling you now, you won't be lost. It doesn't matter what anybody else says. It does not matter. Now, let me, you may be looking around at everybody else saying, well, some people won't make it. Yes, because they do not, they do not believe the way you do. They don't. They don't believe the way you do. In fact, they only believe because it's convenient for them to do so. Notice I did not say obey, I said believe. There are people who seem to be obedient to the word of God, but I'm telling you now, they don't believe. They do not believe. But they seemingly obey everything, but they don't believe. You believe. You can only believe if God gave you to a son. I hope you understand that. Because no one else can ever judge that in your life. Only you can. No one else can ever be an authority on how you believe in Christ. Only you can. Let no one intrude in that area of your heart. Only you can gauge your own belief. Nobody else can. Now that you know who you are, You should know you won't be lost. You're going through a process. It looks like you may be lost sometimes, but you won't. In the book of Daniel, chapter 11, we're going to read about elements of the end times. That looks much like a world today. In fact, a lot of people, they have read the book of Daniel 10, 11, and 12 in a very different way. I'm going to read it. In a very plain way. And yes, I get compassionate about the elements in the book of Daniel. But before I get into this, and before I just may totally go off the rails, I'm going to say it again. I am not an authority in God's word. God is the authority in his own word. We do well to get it halfway right. It's important that you know the elements of the word of God. God will reveal to you the truth of his word. Man does not depart the truth to you. Your heavenly father does remember that too. See, in the Bible it says, these things were revealed from on high. Never did it say, man gave it to you. That's not what it says. Remember that. Don't let Satan trick you ever in life again. Man does not 
Man does not author the truth. Man may repeat the truth, but make no mistake, the truth comes from one source. That is your Heavenly Father. That's why Jesus said that the spirit of truth the world cannot have because it seeth them not. It doesn't see the spirit of truth. It does not have the spirit of truth. Therefore, it does not have the truth. Truth is given by revelation to those who need it among his children. The truth of the identity of Jesus was given to all. That initial belief was a freebie even for the tares. But knowing the elements of the end times, that's given by revelation. The Lord will have that clear to everybody. So you understand, whenever you agree with something, right? When somebody first said, Jesus is Lord, and you said amen, it's not because you read about it. It's because you already knew that inside. Nobody taught you that. When somebody said God is God, you understood what they were talking about. Not because you went to school for it. Because you, that truth was already in you. When the truth is already in you, then you can respond to something. What does that tell you? As long as you've been reading the Bible, many of you have been agreeing with it. You've been convicted by it. You've changed certain aspects of your life by it. How can that happen unless that word is or that word had to already be within you in order for you to agree with the word? Do you understand? That gives you a clue as to your origins. You're in this world, not of this world. Like the Bible says, no seed of God will remain in this world. Now, it doesn't mean... The, no seed of God will remain in the world. That doesn't mean you're, that, that all seeds of God die and go to heaven. That's not what it means. It means you will not remain in the world. That means you will eventually come out of man's kingdoms, man's ways, man's doings, what man made. Why is that so important? Because man was influenced by Satan. The dragon influences mankind to build what he builds. And the Lord called us out of the way they live their lives unto a higher standard, unto the standard. That's called the kingdom of God, which is why the kingdom of God does not come with observation. No one will say here it is or there it is, but the Bible records that the kingdom of God is within you. You're in a process and that kingdom is born within you because you're carrying the ways of the kingdom more and more every day. Until ultimately, you shall be the kingdom, each one of you. The Lord fulfills it. Hmm? The Lord began that work, and the Father decreed it. It's already a beginning process. So we take what others have labored for, and we go further with it in this hour today, this day. But the truth is in you, or you wouldn't understand any aspect of the Bible. And I'll tell you right now, the entire truth is in you. God does not give a partial truth. He gives a whole thing. You, there won't be a time in the end times when you're left alone without knowing and understanding what's happening around you. God will not see you isolated. See, we forget, don't we? We forget that it, there was a season mentioned in the Bible where supernatural things were brought down to a minimal degree. All this time, people have been trying to do supernatural things. God brought that down to a minimal degree. But they are to be restored as soon as certain times in the end times hit. You know what that means? You're not going to be who you, who you are right now, how you are right now. You will not be that way when these times come. When the trouble really comes, something in you is going to wake up so strong. You will not be the person you are right now. You will not. Imagine, just for a moment, you wake up one day and everything is different. Your discernment is so incredibly high. I mean just high and accurate. 
it'll truly be a different world for you. Now, those of the world cannot and will not experience this. Don't your children will. The faithful will. So you've been, you've been taken through a process so that you could be called the faithful first. See, the promises are for the faithful. This entire time, you're being qualified to be called the faithful, that you may be a partaker of that. You probably did not know that. That title comes in the end days. When you're going through a process, you cannot be called the faithful. After the process, you can be called the faithful. See, you didn't know that. This entire time. See, if you knew that too early, you would have reached a point of boredom. And in fact, as we get closer to the withdrawal, to the absolute change of this earth, a whole lot more revelation will come. Man's concepts will further change. And those who belong to the Lord, you will truly see what you have never seen before. Many of you will have heightened discipline, heightened awareness, heightened obedience, strength to obey that you have never had before. You will know what it is for the Holy Spirit to guide and to lead you. It won't be a simple concept. It won't be, well, I think it was the Holy Spirit. It could have been something else. It won't be any of that. You will know. Hmm? But you had to be qualified first. In the Bible, the Lord pre-qualifies all. For, I'm going to give you an example of a process before we jump into Daniel. In the Bible, there's a small phrase that says, whom he calls, he qualifies. Let me show you a setup. Can I show you a setup here? You came into this world, into a world of sin. You were not directly um, um, just thrown into the bunch where you were obedient, right? Where you would listen to everything. No, that's not what happened. You lived years of sin. Some of you got involved in some pretty heavy stuff, and you thought, oh, how, how terrible I am. But you didn't understand, nor did you know about that scripture, whom he calls and qualifies. Let me continue. So all this sin you did in your life, and then one day... After the middle of your life, you start to repent. Once you repent, you did so because you began to see, you saw your life. Right? You saw your terrible life and the deeds and everything else. And then you repent, you get to a certain point where you can actually see in other people's lives some of the mistakes they're making that look just like the life you lived. Also, you can see hypocrites because you, when you were back in the days of sin, one thing you could see clearly was a hypocrite. You would see people doing the same things you did, but they would get around certain people and speak holy. You're older now. You can discern that. In fact, you can discern quite a few things. Why? Because you were at the heart of sin. Now, when you were at the heart of sin, you weren't claiming to be holy. <laughs> no. You were doing everything that, you know, you did. But remember, whom he calls, he qualifies. Whom he called, he also qualified. So you get to the point where you repent. You've asked for forgiveness. After the rotten lives we have lived, we ask for that. We are forgiven. But most people at that point expect themselves to be qualified wrong. Your life of sin were your qualifications, and you didn't even know it. See, you don't know this. But when you were in sin, you were facing darkness, iniquity. You were involved in it. You had to know what it was. You knew exactly what darkness was because you were right in the middle of it. You were set in the middle of darkness. Some of you were set in some severe darkness. You had to know what it was because that's part of your qualifications. Then you repent. Here's how the qualification works. Now that you're saved, you already know about the darkness. You know about the darkness. You know about the traps. You know about a great many things in that world. And now you actually are equipped to help a lot of people. Because you've gone through things that others will go through and you have that language to speak to them. Or 
where nobody else can. You understand portions of darkness, it's just like drug addiction, right? If you've ever been a friend of somebody who became drug addicted, you know how it works, you know how painful it is, right? If you've been around people who lie, you, there are a lot of saints and they say, oh, I hate liars. Let me tell you something. During my days, my youth, I used to lie a lot. I did. In the days of my youth, I would lie a lot. Now listen to me. Right now, I understand why people lie like that. See, that's where wisdom comes. I know that people lie to protect themselves, to, to put a shield around themselves. See, when a saint lies, they don't do it to hurt anybody. That's not why they lie. They do it to protect themselves. They do it because they're frightened. Lying for a saint is almost right there on the line with fear. When you're trying to stay reclusive, hidden, whatever the case is, when you try to avoid trouble and try to survive, you start doing things you wouldn't ordinarily do. I know that lying, right? When a saint lies, they do so because they're trying to survive. They know no other way. Now, when a person these days, when, when I catch a person in a lie, I'm not going to stand up there and say, oh, I can't stand a liar. I'll say, you know what? You don't have to do that anymore. You don't have to lie to protect yourself or hide yourself anymore. You don't have to do that. Because Christ has come. And the Lord will empower you and give you exactly what to say. He'll begin to teach you in your life how to walk in this world without falling as a victim in it. Then the Bible say that the Lord is able to keep, to him, a letter was written, to him who is able to keep us from falling. So yes, he can keep you from falling. But Christ has come. No one need lie anymore. No one need lie because your life is in the hands of the Lord. It's not left to chance. You don't, you're not running around by yourself anymore. No one's coming to get you because they need authorization from the big man. See, you don't have to. Like these people who call, who have bill collectors call, right? When they call your phone, I had a, I had a cousin they kept calling, and I noticed that he just kept calling, kept calling. They would get him down. I talked to him, and the phone would ring nine times. He didn't get the thing. I said, listen, you don't have to speak to them and lie to them, because I know people do that now. Saints, they'll do it right now. There's just, they, they'll say, I hate a liar, yet they themselves are lying. They're lying because they're not projecting the, the real situation. That's a lie. That's, you know. That's, that's falsifying everything. I told my cousin, I said, listen, face it. Don't lie. Face it. Start facing everything. Start facing everything and depend upon the Lord to give you what you need to have, knowledge-wise. You want to say he, he won't fail to do that. So he, I said, tell him the truth. So he picks up the phone. They go through their little thing. You know what I heard him say? I don't have the money. I can't do anything. That broke, that changed the direction of his life. That, the small thing right there, telling the truth, not dodging it for years, but telling the truth, I don't have it. They went from being, what did he say? They went from being mean and abrasive to helpful and life-changing. So he started doing that with everything, telling everybody the truth. The call started to cease because they were the ones that somehow he got hooked into a program and all of them stopped. He didn't have a dime. They initiated this. They did. They initiated this. So it kind of tells you when you, not only did the call stop, but the Lord began to bless him because now he was telling the truth. And when you tell the truth, you're not dodging mentally your own situation. You become aware of it because you've dealt with it. And when you deal with it, not put it under the carpet or anything piece by piece a recovery begins it does the lord will bless what is not hypocrisy he will but if there's hypocrisy and and folks i'm telling you something i know for real if there's any hypocrisy in your life the lord can't bless it because he said he would not that's why he can't bless it because he already said he wouldn't hypocrisy is when we say one thing 
But that's not the way it is on the inside. It'd be like me embracing a person say, how you doing, buddy? I missed you. But the truth was I didn't think about the guy for 20 years. That's hypocrisy. Hypocrisy is when we pray out loud to the Lord one thing, but inside we don't care if he answers or not. That's hypocrisy. Hypocrisy is when we do things in front of one another that's not real, but on the inside we can't stand who we're looking at. Lots of hypocrisy around holidays or people, you know, they're giving to each other this, that, and the other, but you catch them any other time of the year, they're going to give you the cold shoulder. That's hypocrisy. The Lord can't bless hypocrisy. So once the hypocrisy is gone, the blessings begin. Because God wrote, he, he already put forth a standard concerning his blessings. And he, his, he will not break his own word. He'll forgive his word, but he won't break it. Do you know that? Forgiving and breaking are two different things. He will not break his word. The word has already gone out. It performs every day of our lives. See, if he retracts it for one, he'll do it for all. He has never done that. That's why Jesus came to fulfill his word. The same word that was against us, Jesus fulfilled it, and now we still live. Because that word guaranteed that this generation was not to exist. Because of our forefathers. Jesus came fulfilling that word, and now we have life. Your father has joy and blessing your life. All too often, we're the ones, we're the ones who are, we're, we're, we're somewhat misled by worldly concepts and philosophies, and we miss these foundational elements, and our misery is in vain a lot of times. It's due to ignorance, which is why the Bible says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Not knowledge of the earth, not knowledge of robotics and AI, right? Not knowledge of industry and politics, but knowledge of God. When you don't have that knowledge of God, you're not going to know where you are. When you don't know where you are, you're left to every single whim out there. And have you noticed when, when there's a gap in your knowledge, here comes Satan. Satan will give you, he'll give you the knowledge with a twist, just like he did in the garden. See, Satan lies by telling the truth, but you always get a death, a, a dead outcome. Satan lied to Eve by causing Eve to operate against her own creator. That is living a lie. Hope you see that.